ever since ChatGPT came out, people working in all sorts of different professions were thinking, well, our job will no longer make sense, ChatGPT will replace us. And that also came into the universe of agile coaching and scrum masters and the like. So in this video, I just thought we could chat a little bit about the, uh, you know, can ChatGPT really eliminate all the agile coaching jobs? What could that look like? And maybe even use ChatGPT a little bit and see uh, what that tool can do or not for us as agile coaches. So let's get started. Let me start by saying I'm no specialist in AI. And in particular, even though I am a software developer, I have never really coded anything remotely related to anything in AI, which today the most common models are reactive machine and limited memory AI. And we have ChatGPT, which is deep learning. And most of these technologies really, what they do is that they are really efficient in understanding and generating language. So that means that as of today, as interesting as ChatGPT sounds, it cannot really reason like humans. It doesn't have imagination, it doesn't have morals, and it looks through a background of information that if fed incorrectly, it's just gonna basically tell you things that are untrue. So a lot of the, the places where those tools they go is like the World Wide Web and documentation. So sometimes every now and again, they will just say things, generate language that is untrue or that could also not make sense if you really look into the details. If you in particular are afraid of things like ChatGPT, I will not dismiss your fears. I prefer to focus on the positive aspect, but I agree that AI has a high potential for wonder and also for harm. So let's hope that we have very nice regulations around how we can use that because yeah, it can be scary and it, it can cause quite the damage if used with improper care. That being said, let's remember that technology, as far as we think, you know, bringing intelligence, bringing calculations outside of just what humans do, it's not new. We used to do things manually that now are done by computers. And ChatGPT is just another of these steps in evolving technology. That's really how I choose to see it. So if you think, you know, even in doctors and in medicine, they, they used to do things only by hand and they had to look at you and based on what you're saying, they had to differentiate your headache from a symptom of the flu versus let's say a degenerative disease in your brain. And today we have a plethora of imagery and other tooling that doctors can use to make sense of your symptoms and the degree of diagnostics have massively improved. So you get to see that doctors continue to exist. And in fact, what happens is that those technologies, they have a potential to shift, to elevate the applicability of our professions. So I think that for agile coaching, like for any other thing, what's going to happen is that we will leave a position of maybe talking about the basics of agility and getting to much more interesting places which have everything to do with human connection and with experimenting in venturing into what hasn't been explored yet. So let's see what ChatGPT can do for us and uh, see if it's up to par with what the Nadro coach can do. So I'm going to ask it how to coach a scrum team. What can it say? Okay, there's a lot of stuff here. Um, wow. So like, <laughs> okay, we have 18 items that ChatGPT is giving us about how to coach a scrum team. What is it that you really, let's see the details. Understand Scrum, fantastic. Yeah, if you want to coach on Scrum, you need to know Scrum. And um, the next is build relationships. I love this one. So it's telling us that we should focus on the human aspect. So, so far, it's going really good. Creating a learning environment, role clarity, which makes sense because Scrum has specific roles. Supporting the product owner. Yeah. So. Absolutely, everything that it's showing here makes total sense. 
And um, and it's so interesting because if you look into it, it's definitely understanding that the Scrum Master has to operate in the realm of agile coaching. You know, you're talking about adopting adapting your coaching style. You have to mas- be masterful in conflict resolution. And there are so many uh, very interesting and useful pieces in here. And of course, as you can see, this is very brief. And I don't know if you have used ChatGPT before, but you can ask it to give you a whole essay or you can ask it to be very brief. But so far, it's just giving, you know, hint of what is it that you can do it's reminding you to celebrate achievement lead by example you know you have to demonstrate the scrum values so so far it's wonderful it's telling the truth and it's making a lot of sense now let's get specific how to run a sprint review and it's giving us a list, basically the script of what you should be doing in a sprint review. And it's very sound. And it's very nice. It's almost like a checklist. And honestly, if you think about it, uh, are you not looking for a checklist? Are you not reading blog posts to learn these kinds of things? Do you think it is an unfair advantage that a manager is looking for that information instead of asking the company to hire a Scrum Master or an Agile coach? Do you think it's unfair that uh, an Agile coach in the beginning of their career look for these things to feel a little bit more secure and confident into how they can help their, um, their teams and their organizations? I think this is perfectly fine. It's totally fair. And one of the things that it's important to notice is that it's telling you the what, maybe slightly the how, but there is nothing here that actually helps you in the detail of doing these things. So for example, it tells you to integrate feedback number 10 here, feedback integration. After the sprint review, the product owner should review the collected feedback and prioritize any new items in the product backlog. But it doesn't really tell you how to do that prioritization and there are many, many ways of doing so. Now, you probably can ask ChatGPT how to do so and sure, it's gonna tell you a lot of things that in the end equate to you reading a lot of other blog posts or collecting information from books, I really don't see how that replaces the contextualized help of an agile coach or a scrum master. But I do think it shortcuts a lot of things for everybody and I think that's wonderful. Let's get more coaching here. So what questions we ask in a sprint review? Let's see what ChatGPT will give us. And, you know, coaches don't own a list of questions. So it's only sound that ChatGPT will give you a bunch here. I think they're all very fine. They are definitely, um, definitely usable, definitely sound. Um, I love that they, you know, a lot of these are really coaching questions, a lot of um, how, what should we focus on? How can we improve on things? Very, uh, very interesting. And, uh, you know, some of them are, are very inquisitive. Did we learn anything new about the product? Now, as a coach, you know better than to just ask yes or no questions, but go actually like, what did we learn? Because we always learn something. And if you want to extract that, then you would admit that you, you did learn. What was it? So you, you would tweak some of those, but they are very sound questions. And like I said, Agile coaches do not own any list of questions and nobody does really, no type of coach does. And the power of questions really is contextualizing not only to the fact that this is a sprint review, which ChatGPT is doing really nicely, but remember every team in every organization, they are different, they have their own culture. So from the choice of words, to how you prepare the room for people to feel comfortable answering those questions. Can you be more um, thought provoking in a way, you know, a little bit like a, like sassy in how you ask your questions or should it be a little bit more formal? All of that, it's about you as a coach actually have, having to be extremely tuned in with your environment. So ChatGPT for me, it's, a, it's an excellent blog post generator 
very generic actually as in the ideas are good the information so far doesn't seem wrong but the depth is in really using these things in the day-to-day -day. then i feel like asking chat gpt a few more detailed um you know questions such as can you adapt scrum to everything and it says no and you know suggests there's a lot actually a lot of cases in which you wouldn't use scrum and it's funny because it says you know when there is complexity overload but scrum is actually something that you would use when there is a lot of complexity it, it's actually a good framework for that and it seems to so the devil is really in the details it seems to say like well you wouldn't use scrum when there is a lack of in stakeholder engagement so scrum isn't there to solve that so but stakeholder engagement is something that you would need whether or not you use scrum in most of the uh, business settings today especially when you think of you know business agility in general we know that we can't be that detached from our stakeholders so it it says weird funny things so like not using that in solo projects but i know that many of my uh, my students and some peers we all actually test those frameworks ourselves in our solo ideas and then we test with the community and so you know it's in the little things that it seems to be inaccurate so it's not like a f blatantly wrong but if you were someone who don't have that much experience you might read these things and you might think you know oh this is not for me or i can't even try or worse you can even be telling people some of these things that chat gpt tell you that's when it starts getting funny um, and I'm asking, you know, when not to use Scrum and it's saying a small short term project, which is not true at all. You can use the, the Scrum actually is really nice in small short term projects. It's a great way of using Scrum and learning. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's giving kind of like the same answer. L lack of, um, you know, in highly regulated industry, that's also not true. I have personally used Scrum in the banking industry and in health. And you tell me if those are not heavily regulated. Um, so this is, you know, complex, non-technical work. So it says things that really aren't true, but you would have to have experience to know. So you could look at this and end up not trying scrum uh, thinking this is not for you but that's you know i'll we'll, we'll discuss about the scrum feasibility because scrum isn't for everybody in all contexts absolutely but i don't like the uh, you know the ideas that chat gpt is is using in here and then if we ask what do you use if not scrum and it's saying Kanban, okay, waterfall. That, that's a funny one. I think many people wouldn't suggest waterfall these days for, for anything really, but that's a whole nother discussion. Um, extreme programming, agile Kanban, it's it's a funny approach. Hybrid approaches, it's, it, it's mixing a lot of things in here that have to do with heavily, you know, prints too, and, and a few types of uh, project management that you know critical path method i think it's just mixing a lot of things and i'm surprised that it's not saying things like a, just saying hybrid approaches but why is it not mentioning for example scrum bun and the in the other um more interesting agile approaches so it went everywhere it already went outside of the scope of agile even so that's kind of interesting it's a little bit of a you know a little bit of a limitation even even safe, you know, it was not here as an alternative for hybrids. And then when you ask how long for implementing Scrum, it, it's giving also kind of considering thing in phases, almost like a installing your agile in a waterfall manner. Um, you know, there actually you can use Scrum or any other approach in a very iterative manner. So you wouldn't say it's one or two weeks to prepare people and then another week for training. That's not really how it goes. It would actually just, just have the whole iterative process happening in which you bring awareness and you teach and you coach all in the same space. 
So chat GPT doesn't have empirical experience on these things. So we just, you know, it, it collects information and generates language and gives you whatever it uh, mashed up together. So will chat GPT eliminate agile coaching jobs? I can say with confidence, quote me on that, not in a very long time. Not a single coach will be replaced by ChatGPT in a long time. And that is because ChatGPT spills knowledge. <laughs> but in fact, only the very beginners, the very inexperienced agile coaches are the ones who are also just blabbering all that knowledge. I have been there. I have a video in or two in which I talk about that. I will link it here. And you know, it's just like going to Google and finding whatever answer and using it. Some of them are good. Some of them clearly don't have contextualized empirical experience. So as an agile coach, you're not just a coach. You're also someone who is an experienced agile practitioner. You've seen things happening and you learn from that in a variety of contexts and situations. So our value in there is listening to people. It is playing back our observations. And that is a much more delicate and nuanced type of intelligence that so far we don't have technology for. The other thing that I, I reason, you know, the other reason I think people won't be going for chat GPT and instead would prefer an agile coach is because we are humans and we want to connect. So until we can have computers being able to really emote even if it's fake on the computer side, you know, if you don't have that, um, you know, there's the human connection is something that we, we all need, we all crave. And when we want to grow together, whether in a professional context or no matter where else, this is kind of like a requirement. So I don't see how, how ChatGPT is anywhere close to offer that to people. Um, I would also say that, for example, we saw the list of questions and some were, were good, some were just okay. But suppose ChatGPT gave you awesome questions. I know we don't want it to happen forever, but sometimes it's the coach who has to be asking these questions. Maybe for the first time, maybe as you're trying to create an environment where people understand how to ask questions and that it's okay to ask them. So yeah, there's a lot of leadership in agile coaching and leadership that sometimes means you go first, you show the way. And you know, you can't just come in with a list of chat GPT if you're the manager and then you're like, wow, now I'll be, I'll have to be the one asking those questions and I don't necessarily feel safe. So the presence of the agile coach as a facilitator and coach will eliminate some of those discomfort that you could have. The other part of answering that question is, can you as an agile coach, beginner or advanced use chat GPT? Of course that you can't. Who hasn't Googled something before, right? And it's not that different, quite honestly. ChatGPT is a better maybe um, aggregator, a better organizer of things. But in the end, it's just like it's going through a bunch of blogs and trying to make sense of things whenever you don't have the information and you want to learn and you want to know. Now, how we saw here, be mindful. You don't, you can't guarantee where that information is coming from. So you have to do your due diligence. And that is also true in the space where everything become ads. Now you're in social media, everything is ads. You're in your inbox. Now Google give you ads. Like, so basically you can't guarantee that an information that ChatGPT will be giving you in a couple of years won't be, let's say sponsored content. So you're trying to actually find information, but you will be finding the information of the sponsors who paid the most. And lastly, consider the ethics of it all. And I'm going to mention specifically two important clauses here. One being the, the clause number three, your responsibility for learning and growing. So you can use chat GPT, test that safely and, and learn from that and move on and develop your own approach and strategies. It's a responsibility that you have to have. It's part of our code of ethics. I have a video on that one, a link in here as well. The other important clause here for the code of ethics is your ability to perform. If everything that you do is based on you going and, and, and Googling or asking chat GPT, you really need to ask yourself, do you have the ability to perform at this job? Are you being open that you were constantly seeking the help of a bot? It is really important as an agile coach, you don't just declare yourself a coach, you will present 
all of us. So there is a code of ethics to follow in there. And in that aspect, a final piece I would say that you might not think at first, but consider the implications of confidentiality as you were feeding information into chat GPT and other tools, you might let classified confidential information escape. So as agile coach, remember you abide by a code of ethics. Let that be your guide every single time that you take any action representing the congregation of all Agile coaches out there. So ChatGPT in general could be a nice little help, definitely not a substitute of a very proper, very decent, experienced Agile coach and Scrum Master. So whether you're looking into becoming one or if you're thinking about hiring one, I hope this video was useful for you. And uh, I think this video is already quite long. So I'll stop right here, but I'd love to hear your comments. So let me know what you found about this whole video and uh, I'll catch you in the next one, my friend. Bye.